Hi, my name is Alex and welcome to the Crochet Circle. In today's video I want to show you how to make a granny square coin purse. As you can see I have some coins inside and they are not going anywhere because it's nicely secured. I'm using a button just for the flap to be closed. And I'm also using diagonal half of a granny square for the top part so nothing really actually comes out. So I have my money and I have my coins here. And this is a coin purse that I'm gonna be using. Now what you need for this coin purse is one, two, three, four granny squares, one diagonal half of a granny square and a button. You can also use one of those push buttons that you have or just um, a velcro or something to let the top clap uh, flap be secured in place. Now in this tutorial I will also show you how to make -da -da -da, this special stitch. This stitch is actually called a flat slip stitch join for granny squares and this is how it looks. It has a nice chain effect as usually chains or top of a single crochet or a double crochet looks like. So let's begin. Now before I'm gonna begin with the flat slip stitch to, to join the granny squares I want to just show you the layout. So the layout is gonna be uh, like this. I have to join all the granny squares together. Now before I'm gonna start with the slip stitch, uh, flat slip stitch, also I want to pin together all of my corners so I will know that the corners are aligned. I already know that I have the same amount of stitches on uh, each granny square. So the, all the granny squares are actually using the same pattern. Um, except this one is in one solid color. These ones I did change the rows. Uh, and one of them actually has a chain three to go up into the next row and two of them have the standing double crochet for the next row. Uh, all those uh, tutorials can be found in the description below so if you don't know how to do either a solid color one or how to change the colors with a standing double crochet or a chain three uh, you can definitely just check it down in the description below. I will leave all the links there. Uh, and also if you want to know how to do only a diagonal half of a granny square, there will be a link to that tutorial also down in the description below. But for now, first I have to join all the corners together. And then I'm gonna begin with the slip stitches. So, I uh, know I have to go into this one and into this one because between the granny squares in the corners I'm, I only have chain one. So that means that chain one is joined for the whole corner. I'm gonna actually use one more and then I think it's gonna be pinned enough together. Actually, I'm gonna just do one more here. And that's it. This is just to keep the shape. And now I can begin. So I have four granny squares. I have one diagonal half of a granny square. I won't be needing my stitch markers anymore the whole 120 of them because they don't sell them in smaller packages 
now I have some green yarn it's cotton yarn um, and I have my three millimeter crochet hook now for now I won't need the half of the granny square the button and my scissors but I'm gonna begin with joining the squares together so I'm gonna begin in the kind of, let's say top left corner I'm gonna go down to the middle then I'm gonna go down to the bottom left corner and once that will be done I'm gonna be then continuing on the front side of the coin purse so now let's begin so I know that these two stitches are my corner stitches and as you can see I only marked the back loops of both granny squares now because this is gonna be a slip a flat slip joint stitch I'm gonna be only doing stitches through the back loops so if you take a look these are the double crochets and you have the front loop the loop that is pointing at you and you have the back loop so I'm gonna be using these back loops only and I'm gonna be leaving the front loops okay so I'm gonna leave a bit of a tail here now some do a slip stitch in the beginning but I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna just work the end tail in now as you can see this stitch marker kind of marked both stitches already where I have to work so I have to go in to the back loop of the first one into the back loop of the second one and just pull the yarn together now the end tail has to be down here and the starting tail sorry the starting tail has to be at your side and the ball of yarn has to be always at the bottom of your work so I'm gonna kind of hide it down here and now it lays flat the working yarn is under your work and it's also under my work now I have to uh, kind of keep a hold of the starting tail and now continue with the working yarn so I go into the back loop into the back loop now I have three loops on my hook and I just go with my hook through all three of them and now I have to continue this all the way down so through the back loop only through the back loop only through the back loop only and go through all three stitches uh, loops okay so this is the back loop now I'm grabbing the back loop of the second one and going it has to be on the bottom of your work back loop and then pulling through so it has to be on the on the bottom of your work now depending on how easier it is for you I do prefer it having it flat on my desk and then working from it so back loop back loop and then going through all through loops three loops at the same time a 
I just split one so back loop back loop now I have to go through all three loops on my hook and that's it now back loop back loop and go through all three loops on my hook and as you can see you're getting a really nice flat stitch You can always adjust the stitch uh, with pulling it a bit tighter. So back loop and back loop. The working yarn should be at the bottom, grabbing it and going through all three loops. Again, back loop, back loop. You see my working yarn? It's in the back as well. And going through all three loops. And this is the flat slip stitch. And now I have to go all the way around to make the coin purse. Always when you are uh, grabbing the second loop of the right granny square, don't forget your yarn should be below everything. So I'm grabbing the yarn of the left granny squares. I'm grabbing the yarn of the right granny square. You see my working tail is below. It is a bit uh, tricky, but I think the end effect with nice slip stitches is worth the effort. So back loop, back loop, and going through both. Now I'm gonna lose this uh, two stitch markers. So it's back loop, back loop. And I have my working yarn in the back as well and just pulling it through. Now this is the last stitch because it's in the corner. Just a bit bigger loop so now I'm gonna turn the work and I'm gonna continue down because I started like this so this was the top left corner now I'm going down left I know it's a mess. Now I have to do actually because it's a corner stitch. 
and this corner is actually joined with two on two sides I have to go through the back loop and then I have to do a same stitch into the same uh, loop on the right granny square and now I just continue normally one stitch in each of the back loops Some are done so easy and some take a bit of effort. But it also depends on how big the holes are. You see the flat stitch. And again I have a left and a right granny square. From the left one I take the back loop, from the right one I take the back loop and my working tail has to be behind both of them. So one, I'm pushing down the working tail, two, and grabbing it and pulling it through. I hope I didn't disappear out of a frame. So I have three loops on my hook and then I just pull the working yarn through all three of them. Back loop, back loop, If you make a mess like I've done here, just undo the stitch and continue with it. only through the back loop, only through the back loop and then through both of them. And that's it. Now you have to go around like I'm going around. Now what I am thinking of doing some magic tricks with high speed moving forward but to be honest I don't think it would be fair on you because you're doing it at normal speed and I do again still want to show you the whole process of it okay so I've done two sides now this is the back side I'm just making a much bigger loop here so I won't lose it. So this is the back side of my coin purse. This is gonna be now the front side. And now 
I have to join these two uh, sides together. So I'm gonna just use, I'm gonna put my working tail in and I'm gonna use a stitch marker to mark, to, to kind of keep them together. And now I could continue on this side, grabbing my crochet hook. Again, working tail should be in the back. Grabbing the back loop, grabbing the back loop and going through both of them. So back loop, back loop and going through both of them. Actually it's three of them so I have my slip stitch uh, loop and the two back loops of the left and the right granny square. Now the more you will do it, the faster it will go because you will kind of get your own system on how to join the granny squares. What you have to keep in mind is just grabbing the back loops of the left and the right granny squares. First it's the left back loop, then it's the right back loop. I have to go through the whole yarn, not just few strands of it. So, And the working tail is in the back. And then pulling it through all three. Back loop, back loop. Oh, you see, that was my mistake. Has to be on the inside. Back loop and pulling it down, pushing it down. Back loop and going through all three. That's a really nice flat stitch, don't you agree? Okay, so I'm gonna lose this stitch marker again and continue working on it. To be honest, I had some few days off now for my summer vacation and I was thinking, oh, I need to crochet now, I want to crochet, but it's been so hot that I couldn't be bothered crocheting. So what I was doing was, well, I was on my bike and I went hiking and it was a really good time of everything. And I just lost a button. Perfect. And that's what I get if I don't have everything in place on my desk. So I'm gonna do this stitch. and look for the button. This button will be up here once everything is gonna be ready. Okay, so as you can see, 
the coin purse is kind of already getting its shape so what I have to continue now is down this side so again I'm gonna go down on the left so I'm gonna grab a stitch and I'm gonna grab a stitch here as well the working tail is in the back I have both back loops and now I continue so back loop yarn on the bottom back loop and pulling it through all of them back loop back loop and going through all of them I'm just see, watching that I'm doing a nice and even slip stitches because I don't want some stitches to be really big and some stitches to be really tight. I'm just gonna remove this marker as well because now I know which two sides I need to do together. So it's back loop, back loop and joining them together now of course if you will be doing much larger granny squares that means your coin purse will be just a bit bigger perhaps it can be a clutch or something like that but I want this coin purse for me to be honest because I'm sick of and tired of losing my change in my backpack all the time especially when I go up hiking and I think this will be the perfect little coin purse for me to carry around and then I'm gonna just be waiting for either my sister or my niece to say I want one of them as well. <laughs> Just through the back loops. I don't like this stitch because I split the back loops so no splitting back loops has to go through all of them so back loop back loop and through all of them and now <laughs> I'm gonna undo this I have to go join these two continue working on them and then only back upwards to the right up side and then it's already going to be joined so I just have to continue working on these two granny squares I know there's a corner but uh, it's going to be folded so it's okay 
Um, I hope you did see the diagram that I've put up, how to join them and which stitches or uh, which sides to make first. And one of the reasons I'm doing it this way is because I don't want to cut my joining yarn too many times. So it's gonna be done all in one go. Less cut yarn means less off cuts and also it's gonna be much sturdier to work with. Okay, I kind of lost the count here because this is definitely not right. No, it's okay. I have them. I have them. The working tail should be in the back. have to get into the corner I just split the blue yarn again so that's no good just redo the stitch uh, because perhaps you think it won't bother you Trust me, it will bother you once you will finish your work and just fix it now while you're still a stitch away then to undo all the stitches for that one mistake. Okay, yeah, I did mix up with some stitches, so uh, there I have one, two, three, and on this side I have four. So I missed a stitch. What should I do now? Hmm. Well, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go back to here because I missed a stitch there. You didn't see that. back and back and through all three of them and this happens when you hurry I mean, I even used stitch markers and I still missed uh, stitches, so I think I should have used more of them.
this one is way too loose so I'm gonna just tighten it up a bit more back loop back loop and through all three of the loops Now this is the corner one, so I do the same one in the corner and now I have to switch from continuing here to going up right. So I'm gonna do into the blue one and also here into the next stitch. Of course, just the back loop and then pulling it through all of them. Back loop, back loop. And through all of them. This is the back side. Now, if you want, you could finish at this point when I'm gonna finish it, but uh, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm also gonna include my diagonal half granny square in. Uh, and I'm gonna include it in to the front so nothing will fall out. So the front loop, the back loop, the back loop and then through both loops and the working yarn should be at the bottom. Now this is the last one because this is the corner one. Back loop, back loop and through all of them. Now if you don't want to use this half of a granny square here, you continue just doing single crochets all the way around where in this loop where, where I have five single five chains I would do seven uh, single crochets <laughs> but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna include this 
half of a granny square into my work so I'm gonna go down up and then I'm gonna be doing single crochets just from the other side so I'm just gonna pin it in so I will know where my corner is actually gonna be and now I can continue So, back loop, back loop, yarn in the back and pulling through. I know it's a bit uh, not easy to hold this work in so if you would be doing a blanket it would be much 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 easier because all your, st all your stitches would be laying flat down but because I'm doing this coin purse the stitches are going up and down and left and right and the granny squares are actually uh, fold it in half so it does make it just a bit harder to work with but I think as I already said it the end result is definitely worth it so just doing the flat slip stitch join for granny squares I don't know if you can hear it, but here is currently a helicopter um, whizzing around. That usually isn't anything good because I do live up a bit higher on the mountains and whenever we hear a helicopter flying around like this, that means that either someone was lost or there was an accident up in the mountains so i do hope it wasn't nothing serious because also the weather currently isn't good enough to be going up hiking but not all people know that so yeah there's no bad i know that they are saying that there's no bad weather just bad equipment so probably people who don't have the right equipment so I'm at the corner now just grabbing the corner stitches from the left and the right and now continuing to work And you probably hear all my back noise because it's summer and I have all my windows opened so I have some fresh air at the moment in okay so I'm slowly getting to the end here so yeah you can use this uh, flat slip stitch to join granny squares for either blankets or as you can see here I'm doing a coin purse that I'm joining them together um, you can make afghans, you can make jumpers, you can make cardigans out of them so whatever you want to do with your granny square I think that the flap 
slip stitch join between them looks really amazing now the second stitch that I would perhaps suggest using is the zigzag one but the zigzag one I already made a tutorial on how to do the zigzag join for granny squares to be honest I'm gonna link that in the description below as well so just so you will have all the uh, kind of important things in one place and you can also check it out on my homepage where I have the again out of shot sorry where again I have all the patterns that I'm using in my video tutorials and they are written down or a diagram so you are welcome to join me there and check it out and I just missed a stitch so I'm gonna redo it first the left granny square then the right granny square and then just pulling it through everything and I have to keep in mind that the working yarn is always in the back I'm almost at the end here and then I'm only gonna have single crochet stitches to go around and around and then the coin purse will actually be done now two more stitches and the last one is actually joined with the first one and that's it okay so this is now the coin purse what I have to do is all around here I'm gonna do single crochet in each of the stitches so I'm gonna go through both loops now and just do a single crochet now what you can do also just to have a bit more of a volume or something like that you can make a picot or you can actually do also some rifles or some waves but I just opted for normal single crochets all the way around just to, to have a nice edge of everything so in each stitch I'm just doing a single crochet now here is my hole for the button so I have five single crochets here uh, five chains here so I'm gonna do seven single crochets into that loop if you're wondering why I do more than just the number of chains because it's in a curve and it looks much fuller like that so now just single crochets on the other side down Here I have to go through both stitches and I'm also gonna actually yeah I'm also gonna do 
this edge here as well. So here are the double crochets. So in each of the double crochet, I'm going to do two stitches and move to the next one. This is the center of it. I'm going to do one single crochet and then again two single crochets in each of the double crochets. to do actually here another single crochet and I'm gonna join it uh, with a slip stitch. Do a chain one, leave a bit of a tail, cut the yarn and pull it through. Now all I need to do is sew the button on and of course uh, put it in place. So I will block it, I will uh, spray it with a bit of water to be honest and then position it and it's gonna have a nice uh, square shaped. Now for the button, I'm just going to be using a normal needle and some thread. Now where your position of your button is going to be depending on how big the button is and all the rest of things. So I'm going to kind of just measure it and see where the button should be. So the button should be here in the corner. Now how to sew the button in is totally up to you but usually I do first few stitches just on the fabric <laughs> the button <laughs> and then I sew the button on and now I'm gonna go in and out a few times don't twist it now I have this kind of a button, but you can also have a normal flat button with either two buttonholes or four buttonholes. I just think this one looks really awesome because who doesn't like white polka dots, right? It's really messy to sew on, but... It will hold. It will hold my money in, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I kind of felt that I uh, went too far away with my hand and kind of nudged a bit my camera stand so it wasn't an earthquake or something like that it was just me being a bit clumsy
So this is gonna be it. I think it's secured enough. So now I'm gonna go into the back side and I'm gonna make a knot. So I'm on the back side. How I usually make a knot is I kind of scrape a bit of yarn or fabric, go two, three times around my needle and just pull the thread through. And that is a really nice secured in place knot. And I'm just gonna do it again. Scrape a few strands, go three times around the needle and the knot is actually at the base where it should be. Now I'm just hiding the end tail in. You don't see this <laughs> starting an end tail, so... This is my granny square coin purse done. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask. Uh, I don't bite. I gladly try to answer all the questions that you have for me. So as you can see, this is the flat slip stitch. And this is my granny square coin purse. Now I have to go and get some money for it <laughs> to put it in. Until the next time, I'm gonna say happy crafting!